In this video, we're going to discuss deferred tax liabilities. So a deferred tax liability is an increase in the tax that you're going to pay in future periods due to a temporary tax difference. And by temporary, I mean that there's some kind of timing tax difference. For example, between book and tax income, maybe the depreciation is accelerated, so you get the deductions faster with tax. So, so let me give you an example. Let's say that in your current period, your income tax expense is $100. But your income tax payable, the amount you're actually paying, is only $80. And so you'd see, naturally, we need a plug here to make our left and our right side balance, our debits and our credits, so that they're equal to each other. So what we're going to do, our plug, is going to be deferred tax liability, and it's going to be of $20. Now, the reason that this might occur is you might be you have something where you're depreciating on an accelerated basis for tax, but you're doing straight line depreciation for book purposes. And so basically in the first year, you're having the situation where the tax you pay is lower than your tax expense, but you're making this deferred tax liability entry to recognize that at some point in the future, in a future year, this is going to reverse, right? Temporary tax differences reverse because it's just a timing difference. At some point, your tax payable is actually going to be higher than the income tax expense, in which case you'd be debiting the deferred tax liability. Let me show you a more comprehensive example, make it a little bit easier to understand. So let's say that you start your own business and you decide that you need some, some office equipment and you have a good friend, Tom Hanks, and Tom decides to, to, to convince you that you need a typewriter. You don't need a computer. He says, you know what, typewriters actually have a lot of advantages that people don't think of. And he convinces you to buy a typewriter, but not just any typewriter, a special Tom Hanks typewriter that has been signed by him personally. And so you pay $60,000 for this typewriter. You say, hey, this was, this was used by Tom Hanks, the famous actor. So you depreciate this typewriter over five years and you have a tax rate of 40%. Now I wanna show you how this would result in a deferred tax liability and what the journal entries would be. So for year one, we can think about the depreciation that's taken for book purposes, and let's say that it was according to straight line depreciation, just gonna abbreviate that, and then the tax depreciation, which is going to be on an accelerated basis. Right, so it's accelerated. You're, you're taking more depreciation in the early years of the asset and less in, in the later years. So you're going to take 20,000 of depreciation in year one. So now we see that actually the excess tax depreciation over book depreciation is $8,000. That means we're taking an extra 8,000 in tax depreciation in year one than we are of book depreciation. And so our pre-tax book income, so our book income, is going to be $100,000, let's say, and now our tax income is going to be lower. And the reason is because of this. We took that excess tax depreciation. We took an extra $8,000 in depreciation expense, so our taxable income, our taxable income should be $92,000, okay? So now, for year two, Let's say we have a situation where we say, okay, the book depreciation is still 12,000 because we, we basically, we're just doing straight lines. So every year it's gonna be 12,000, there's no salvage value. Tax depreciation is 16,000. So excess tax of a book is 4,000. And then taxable income is going to be 96,000. That's just the 100,000 minus the 4,000. Now, I just wanna fill this out quickly. So this is a five year asset. So in year three, there is no excess tax over book, so taxable income and pre-tax book income are exactly the same. In year four, we have where actually there's, a, now it's a situation where you're taking less tax depreciation than book depreciation. Now it's reversing. Remember we said that it would reverse, and so your taxable income is actually higher than your, your pre-tax book income. And then in year five, let me stick with the colors, the year five, it's going to be 8,000 lower to tax depreciation than book depreciation. So your taxable income is gonna be $108,000. Now I wanna show you the journal entries and this might help it make a little more sense to you. So in year one, the journal entry that we'd be making is we'd be saying, okay, look, we're gonna to have to debit income tax expense and then we're gonna credit income tax payable. Now how much do we debit and we credit? Well, the income tax expense of 40,000 is the 100,000, 
the 100,000 times 40% because we have a tax rate of 40%, remember? So this right here, this 40,000 is 100,000 of pre-tax book income times 40%. That tells us our tax expense, right? But now, remember something here. We've got a situation where our taxable income is lower in year one than our pre-tax book income. So if we multiply the 92,000, that's 92,000 here of taxable income for year one, 92,000 times our tax rate, it will give us $36,800 tax payable. Now you could think of this as this is a this is a check you're writing to the IRS right now. Now, in actual practice, we don't know the exact amount that the firms write as a check to the IRS. This is our best estimate, right? So we're saying, okay, tax payable is 36800 So the difference, this gap between the 40000 and the 36800 that's our deferred tax liability. What we're saying is, hey, look, because of the way that the tax depreciation is set up, it's on an accelerated basis, so we're getting twenty thousand of tax depreciation in year one, where we only got eight thousand or twelve thousand of book depreciation. Now, if we were to add up over all all the five years, if we add up the total depreciation, you would see there's actually the same amount. So we have sixty thousand in total depreciation for book and sixty thousand for tax, right? And so. We have taken the same amount of depreciation. It's just a timing difference. It's just a timing difference. And so this temporary difference, we're saying, look, at some point in the future, we are going to have to pay tax on that extra that extra eight thousand. It's going to reverse, right? And we're going to pay tax. So this thirty-two hundred, you could think of this as the plug to make it balance. But if you wanted to calculate it, you would say eight thousand, eight thousand, which is the excess tax over book. 8,000 times 40%. So that's year one's journal entry. Now, year two, we're going to have the same deal where we take 100,000 times 40% is going to give us our income tax expense. Every year it's going to be the same because, well, look, the way we've got it set up is our pre tax book income is 100,000 every year. So every year, income tax expense is going to be that 100,000 times 40% that we calculated before. Now, income tax payable is going to be different. Because we're going to be taking now 96,000 taxable income. So this is 96,000 times 40%. That gives us 38,400. And then our plug, the deferred tax liability, is 1,600. Or if you want to calculate it directly, you can take 4,000 times 40%. Okay, and that's going to give you the 1,600. That's the deferred tax liability, right? That's a liability that appears on the balance sheet. And, and so forth. Now, in year three, we don't have a deferred tax liability, right? Year three, income tax expense and income tax payable are exactly the same. They're both 40000 Why is that the case? Because it just so happens that we take the same amount of book depreciation and the same amount of tax depreciation in year three. So pre-tax book income and taxable income are exactly the same. They're both 100000 So we're going to have 40000 income tax expense, 40000 income tax payable. Now, Year four now is where the deferred tax liability starts to reverse, right? We're starting to reverse. Why? Because now we have the situation where it's actually the excess tax over book. Now, instead of having more tax depreciation than book depreciation, we have less tax depreciation relative to book depreciation. So now it's going to start reversing and we're going to start undoing this deferred tax liability. So how do you decrease a deferred tax liability? Well, like any liability, it goes down with a debit. So we're going to have our income tax expense is 40000 again. Every year, it's 100000 times 40%. The income tax payable is going to be 41.6. How do we get that? 104000 times 40%. Okay, so this is going to be 104000 times 40%. That gives you 41.6, and then our plug is the deferred tax liability is 1600 So now we're decreasing the deferred tax liability. And then year five, it's similar, income tax expense of 40000 And then we have our income tax payable of 432 which is just simply that 108000 times 40%. So this is 108000 times 40%. And then our plug is the deferred tax liability of 3200 Now. 
if you add up if you add up all the debits the times we've debited deferred tax liability and the times we credited it I'm just going to show you a quick T account so we initially credited it for 3200 and then we debited it for 1600 or excuse me credited it again for 1600 and then we did nothing in year three and then in year four we debited it for 1600 and then year five we debited it for 3200 and what is the end result zero so our deferred tax liability ultimately after the five years when we fully depreciated this thing it has reversed right that means that these were just temporary tax differences we took the same amount of depreciation on the asset for tax and book purposes there was just a timing difference of when we took those deductions so ultimately the tax the deferred tax liability is zero now if you look at a firm's balance sheet very uh, infrequently would it say oh deferred tax liability is zero because the firm has many different types of deferred tax liability so even though the one piece of property would eventually reverse and go to zero the firm has other pieces of property that it's starting to have deferred tax liabilities for and stuff so that's why a lot of times you'll, you'll look at a firm and you'll see a deferred tax liability and it won't go to zero in a couple of years because they're buying new property and so forth so this is what a deferred tax liability is. In the next video, we'll be talking about a deferred tax asset.